the NFL is really smart. Um, they, they do a couple things really well. They understand that they're a television show. Um, so they spread their events out and make them events. Every month has an event. You got free agency. You got the draft. You got the combine. You got the preseason. You got the, the, the schedule release. I mean, they put it right in the middle of the week, Wednesday, knowing that guys like me are going to talk about it today, Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, and some guys talk about it Friday. Put it right in the middle of the week. They drop it right before the NBA playoffs because sports is going to get a little cluttered here next week. So they put it right... They think about everything. And then when the NFL does have problems, they address them quickly. I mean, Major League Baseball has a three-year problem. I don't know. It feels like a big deal. Nobody can hit anymore. You may want to address it. Crickets. NBA lost a third of its audience last two years. Stars don't play in the biggest games. You may want to address it. NFL changed their catch rule before the Super Bowl. Like in the game. Like, we got to make this better on television. So the, the schedule today is perfect. They think about everything. They think about everything in the NFL. Great example. Cowboys, Buccaneers. So you get the biggest brand in the NFL against the best team. And it's also, I think, going to be a competitive game. Because the Cowboys' offensive line is old. And you don't get 17 games out of it. But in week one, little Super Bowl win hangover for Tampa, loving themselves. They got the feels for themselves. Here comes Dallas. Zeke's healthy. O-line healthy. Competitive football game. But just look at how thoughtful they were here. So Jets-Panthers is a 1 o'clock game. Now, if you played that, Joy, in week 9, nobody cares. But Sam Darnold faces the team that dumped him week 1 and faces his heir apparent week 1. Hell yeah, I'm watching. That's exactly when you put that. That game is less interesting every week. By week six, nobody cares. But they put it week one. They thought about it. Seahawks at the Colts, two Super Bowl contenders. Browns at the Chiefs, AFC championship contenders. Oh, Dolphins, Patriots. When is Belichick most vulnerable? September. That's his history. So they bring in Brian Flores. It's Belichick against his protege. It could be two against Mac Jones. Then they go... Packers Saints, two massive brands. They collide. Plus, we all want to watch that, right? Fox puts that the late game. Aaron Rodgers, even if he's there, he hates the team. He hates the GM. He's all upset. And then you go Monday night. Oh, by the way, Bears, Rams, NBC. Why, why does that matter? First of all, Chicago, LA, huge markets. But why it matters is because Matt Stafford and Sean McVay, there is a, a feeling in Vegas in the betting community, Stafford's going to have a massive year. So the NFL doesn't want to wait to start that story. The NFL week one, they're going, to, they're going to put at night on NBC, they're going to put Matt Stafford and McVay. Week one, Sean McVay has been a great September coach, a bunch of new tricks like Andy Reid in the offseason. He's a very good play designer. Suddenly you got Stafford with a big win, Stafford with a lot of points. It's not going to be cruddy weather. Bears in L.A., big brand, Matt Stafford, Sean McVay, and the story's rolling. Then Monday Night Football, John Gruden used to broadcast on it. John Gruden and the Raiders host the Ravens. By the way, if the Raiders were at Baltimore, it could be a blowout. But in, but in Vegas? So you're going to get the Cowboys against the Super Bowl champs. Vegas, Los Angeles. Here's the other thing. Here's how smart they are. Th this, this is a true story. What I'm about to tell you is a true story. And this is where the NFL works very well with their TV partners. So the four o'clock window, 425 on Fox, they have the Broncos game against the Giants and the Packers game. Color me non-coincidental if Aaron Rodgers does go to the Broncos, Fox doesn't have to change the games. Fox has them both. So if Aaron goes, I'm going to Denver, get me out of here. Fox has both the Green Bay game and the Denver game. They cover themselves. That is thoughtful. That is smart. One team got a really bad break. I know, I know, Cleveland. I'm picking on you. Uh, Cleveland got a bad break. They got the worst break in the league. Cleveland's a good football team. I think they're the best 
over bet nine and a half wins. I think they're a 10, 11 win team. They got a terrible break. Andy Reid is the best September coach in football. That's who the Browns open with at Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes under Andy Reid in September is 10 and 0 with 32 touchdowns and zero interceptions. It is the last place you want to play Kansas City. Andy Reid's the best NFL coach in September, and he's the best NFL coach off a bye, and week one is essentially off a bye. Andy Reid buries his play sheet until week one. Go ask Belichick. He's humiliated Belichick in September. Also, Cleveland's going to have eight or nine new defensive starters. So in week nine or ten, this is a tug of war. This is a real game. In week one, nine new defensive starters against the best game play designer in the NFL and the best quarterback at home. (laughs) Now, the good news, Cleveland, you're used to not winning in week one. You haven't won a week one game in 17 years, so you'll be 0-1. And you'll overcome it because you're a really good team. You have a really good coach. But that is a bad scheduling break. You know, again, Pittsburgh is not a team that I'm fond of this year. But in week one, they're healthy. Mike Tom, ben, Big Ben's at his best early. He deteriorates. These, these old quarterbacks get worse late, right? Big Ben in September, he'll give you a game. Pittsburgh would be better served because they don't have a bunch of new defensive faces. Pittsburgh would be better served to go to Kansas City and compete week one. Not a team with nine defensive starters that are learning a system from other teams. Uh, young, uh, this is a bad break for Cleveland. I still think they're a really good team next year. This is Baker Mayfield. Just to show you Cleveland's history in week one, Baker Mayfield has two starts week one. He lost 43 to 13 and 38 to six. So I'm not going to do a blazing five, but um, I will bet some games today. Uncle Colin does not waste opportunities to make some lettuce. If I did a blazing five today, because the lines often never get better on Fox bet, here's the best lines. Seattle plus three at Indianapolis. Seattle tends to be, again, same coach, same quarterback, many of the same weapons. Indianapolis has a new quarterback. And so, and their best young receiver, Michael Pittman's never worked with Carson Wentz. I think the Colts are going to be really good. I don't know how good they're going to be in week one. Last year they lost to the Jags in week one. So I would take Seattle in the points in week one. Atlanta minus one and a half. Now, you know Atlanta burns me every year, but Atlanta actually got beat up last year. Atlanta now adds Kyle Pitts. They get Arthur Smith, a really, really smart offensive mind, is their head coach, and they face a Philadelphia team at home. They only have to give up, put it up again, only have to give up one and a half points. I think Atlanta is a really good bet. I think the Philadelphia Eagles made a just an egregiously bad hire at head coach. I would take Atlanta minus one and a half against Philadelphia. I would actually take the Cowboys plus four and a half against Tampa because that line is probably going to get bet up to about five and a half. Brady's going to get a lot, Curry, a lot of the favor of the general public. People are going to say, oh, Cowboys are going to get blown out. Not in week one. Not really in week one. When you win the Super Bowl and you're having parades and you're throwing the trophy around the Tampa Bay, week one, you could be a little sluggish, a little, little Super Bowl hangover. It's, been a, it's hard to get guys you know, motivated for week one. And Dallas' offensive line and Zeke will be healthy week one. Dak's got a lot to prove. He's got a big new contract. Dak wants to prove he can compete. He's worth the money. I would take Dallas and the points. Chargers at the Washington football team. Now, I like the Chargers a lot this year. But they have a brand new offensive line and a brand new coach, and they are facing Ron Rivera's defensive front, which is outstanding. So you're taking the Chargers, who I think are going to be really good. That is a tough opener. On the road, six-hour flight, veteran head coach, the system's already implemented, uh, and you got Brandon Staley, who's very, very good. But boy, oh boy, that's a lot to chew off in week one. I'd probably take the Washington football team. It's a pick And Kansas City minus four and a half against the Browns. That number is going to end up five or six. That's the best number you're going to get. Uh, Kansas City is going to curry a lot of favor with the betters. So I would take uh, Kansas City minus four and a half. That's today, uh, I think, the best bets on the board. Well, 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 you know, what do I know except everything? Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.